welcome back, everyone. We are here on Adobe Live with Farm Design. We've got Aaron and Christine. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for day three of three with our farm friends, or as Kat just said, uh, farm hands. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have like a name for the people in the studio? Like a nickname? Farm hands? Cowpokes? <sighs> friends? <It's> farmers. <laughs> Pixel pushers. Pixel pushers, pixel plowers. Plowers, pixel plowers. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Pixel pushers. Cool. Well, welcome. And if this is your first time on Adobe Live, we are here mostly every Tuesday through Thursday on Behance, be.net slash live. There's an Ellen DeGeneres selfie going on in the background right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's like 10 people in it. Um, so make sure that you're watching on Behance, be.net slash live. If you come over to Behance and you're active in chat, you could be the winner of... I'm guessing we're giving away Ooh. this Creative Cloud pillow. Okay, Ooh. cool. <laughs> Just cool. confirming, yes. And it looks very orange from your point of view, but this is that classic Adobe Red Creative Cloud logo. So nice. So be active in chat, you could win. We're gonna be doing this in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then another thing to let you all know about is we're gonna be doing portfolio reviews today. And you have some amazing designers to review your portfolio. So we have uh, one portfolio from a student that was submitted uh, last week or so, and then we're also asking you all to submit your Behance portfolios. So you have about an hour and a half to get those submitted. Uh, we're gonna focus on graphic design and the full layout of your portfolio, so make sure that it is nice and updated. And maybe you all can introduce yourself for the third time. Third and last time. Okay, hey everyone, I'm Christine, Art Director at Farm Design. And I'm Aaron Atchison, the founder, creative director of Farm Design. And we're a uh, branding agency in uh, Pasadena, California. And so we do a lot of consumer packaged goods, restaurants, um, a lot of branding systems. Mm -hmm. and beverage, yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Some uh, beverage. Yeah, yeah so the, nice. behind us is a recent sort of branding project we did for a, a brewery in San Diego. It's a lot of packaged goods, restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and so that one was a lot of fun that just uh, launched a couple months ago. So if you're ever down in the San Diego mm -hmm. area, you should check it out. It's called Bivouac. Is it in like word. North Park area? Yeah, North Park area. Anyone's little, from there? Hipster area. Nice. Has a very hipster name. Yeah. And I'm, uh, well, we're going over to your computer, I guess. Okay, cool. Oh. So um, maybe we can chat about what happened yesterday and what you've done for homework overnight. Yeah, so. Uh, during this whole time here, we were working on a restaurant called Waki Taki, and it's gonna be a yakitori kind of food stand in a food hall um, in LA's Grand Central Market. And so for those of you who don't know what um, a food hall is, it's basically a collection of food boutiques, a place where you can get, um, you know, food made by local artisans, your meat and cheeses. Um, so there's just, it's just a fun area where you can, you know, congregate, hang out with some friends. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'll jump into kind of what we've been doing. So at the beginning, you know, we always start with a brief. Um, every time you start a project, really get to know that brief and your client and your parameters. Um, from then, you can start going into you know, your ideation. And then we started talking about mood boards. So when you're crafting mood boards, it's something that you want to um, perhaps create a brand essence. So what is that feeling, that yeah. personality? How are your consumers gonna connect to this brand? So we narrowed it down to kind of this mood board that you see on the screen right now. Um, so we kind of played with, you know, bold shapes, overlapping, and we talked about how, you know, the classic um, mood boards are kind of, you know, locked up in a grid. Right. But we like to do things organically just so we can find areas um, of visual opportunity. Ooh, and we that. kind of create um, s potential systems that we can use throughout the touch points. Mm -hmm. So once you're done with this, you know, this is just one. Uh, yeah, we, ex we, we explore a lot and mm -hmm. I think you kind of want to do that when you're in an exploration stage. Um, you know, let your mind loose, let it, you know, explore. And, you know, you'll come to find that you can kind of do some, you know, combinations of both maybe. And that's kind of how we ended up in this space. Yep. Yeah, so this um, week we, we were somewhat limited for time. So yeah, we really somewhat. kind of focused <laughs> on sort of one brandscape um, as the impetus for our direction. 
but I, I encourage everyone when you're doing these brandscapes mm -hmm. to do multiple brandscapes. And we, so we recruit the, pretty much our entire team mm -hmm. at Farm Design when we have a project that we do these brandscapes. So everyone comes up with different ideations on what this might look like in establishing brand essence. So right. mm -hmm. this is what we have here, and then this is where we started to flush it out. Yeah. So yeah, this so this one's a little more narrowed. We had um, Carol, one of our illustrators. Um, at the office illustrate these like chicken with a walkie-talkie um, this little food stand and then we crafted a logo and some brand messaging right. so don't forget about the words guys um, words are important um, not so we are visual communicators but again don't forget that words are important totally and Kat wants to know how many people are at farm at the moment uh, we're at seven to eight seven. Um, we still have a Right now, I think we're like maybe eight or nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we... It's uh, the biggest it's ever been. Yeah, so we have an intern <laughs> uh, who comes in a few days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're right now around eight or nine. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still small. Still yeah. small. Yeah, part. we like it small. We're intentionally small. Good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. We like to keep it intimate. We like to be, work really closely with our clients. Mm -hmm. And so and it allows us to be very selective on the type of work that yeah. um, we take in. Mm -hmm. So if we... Yeah, so it's by choice. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. So jumping back to this guy. Uh, so yesterday, after we settled on a mood board, we went to exploring touch points. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a list of, you know, when we do restaurants, we have a list of deliverables. So we have like a bag, a cup, uh, maybe a coaster. Um, uh, what else do we have? Like a to-go box, maybe. Yeah, a little cone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, consumer touch yeah. points. Mm -hmm. you know. So yesterday I was designing flat and I was doing what we like to call creative sprints. So again, you know, you don't want to focus on just one bag, like a whole two hours. Right. You kind of just want to just try different things out. So, you know, what I was doing here is, you know, playing with contrast. So I have some end placement. So I have some that are up top that are bigger, some below that are lower. And for all these, I kind of had like contrast panel. Gotcha. That can always make something interesting. Oh, you mean the black on the left? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, you know, we're going craft bag. And, and she's here. also just working with the large shapes and colors at this mm -hmm. stage. She's yeah. not working with any sort of like granular details, details just anything. yet. We're trying to get sort of the high level mm -hmm. sort of ideation, mm -hmm. um, the view or sort of the, the look and feel of it. Mm -hmm. And then we go into that sort of secondary and tertiary levels of, of detail. But at this first stage, it's not but, important. Yeah. So don't get worried about making everything perfect. Mm -hmm. And then in this panel, we were kind of playing with, you know, brand messaging that's more prominent. So over now, we were talking about like, you know, the walkie talkie lingo. Yeah. And then Carol's great illustrations here. We wanted to create a lot of depth so that the design isn't too flat or one dimensional. We kind of like it when it piques the consumer's interest and it makes you want to kind of walk around you know, the packaging. Right. Maybe uh, discover something, be yeah. delighted. Yeah, yeah so I like to call them little Easter eggs or yeah. nuggets mm -hmm. yeah, that you can uh, <laughs> discover. Yeah, so here we have, you know, we have the brand voice, and we're like, okay, maybe the branding is on the side. Tried using the cart. So using all the artifacts and then kind of creating this landscape and comparing and contrasting always. Right. You know, does the logo work better? you know, in a shape. And let's see what else we got here. These were just, is there one that was more simple? Mm -hmm. And then the detail is more on the side panels. So at this stage, it's it's yeah. really all about quantity versus quality. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's easy to really get caught up and, and take so much pride at the early stages to, to try to craft something that's perfect and beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, that comes later. You, you really want to um, sort of generate, generate a lot of ideas. Um, and then you can start to go into those little details and get a little more precious and detailed with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. So this is like the whole layout. Yeah. So, and then I grabbed, you know, the other touch points because I wanted to see how they work as a system. And so, you know, does the cup have more contrast against the bag? Right. Um, I think that's important because you don't want everything to be just maybe all black, mm -hmm. you know? So we're kind of getting a play with something that's clean and then maybe something that's more textural and mm -hmm. tonal. Mm -hmm. So then through this way, you're kind of creating, you know, a different 
system, like a robust system. Yeah, this just popped into my mind, but it's kind of like a bouquet. Like, yeah. lots of bouquet contrast. Bouquet yakitori. <laughs> Literally the most delicious <laughs> bouquet. And, and empathize with the consumer. Think about what that <clears throat> dining experience might be like, how they might be sort of drinking their cold beverage, and then they might be um, experiencing the food. And yeah. all those different touch points mm -hmm. gives them different facets, or you're creating opportunities to give different levels of telling a brand story, right. as opposed to just saying the same thing over and over again, because it starts to get sort of visually redundant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you want to keep it sort of interesting and, yeah. and just leverage as many of those opportunities that you have available. Yeah, I think if it does get redundant, you stop seeing it in general. Yeah. It's just all the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then these are just a couple more. We tried some, you know, pink cups versus black and tan. Um, how to use that, you know, that graphic that we created. It's in characters, but it means yakitori. Mm -hmm. um, provided by Google Translation. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Not sponsored. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Ooh, a little sneak peek. Yep. Show you <laughs> how to do that later. Wee. <laughs> um, so click on these. So we did a couple more iterations, you know, after we left. Wow. So, you know, and this was like, you know, something that was found, but, you know, it created a lot of like interesting movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you zoom in yeah. on that? You mean something that was found as in? Uh, some like found artwork. Okay. And so then we, um, you inspo. know, so inspiration and it kind of happened serendipitously. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we kind of put it there and we're like, oh, cool. There's like a lot of, you know, interesting nuances mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Because um, we felt we, we felt pretty good about the big picture, like we started liking the color combinations yeah. and the layering and how the elements are interacting with each other, and so we were just working with those big sort of puzzle pieces, and then uh, we liked that direction, so we narrowed the focus, and then we wanted to start exploring what are some of the most more detail to give it a little right. more depth, mm -hmm. and so that's what you start to see here is like this is um, where it kind of started. We liked where it was going, and then we started throwing things against the wall, like, what if we added more detail? And you can start to see some of the so, sort of more granular sort of elements and maybe storytelling. Yeah. Is it sort mm -hmm. of Japanese script? Are we telling a little more of the brand story? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so this was, again, uh, found artifacts online, and then it was inspired us to take that to the next level and try to develop this further. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see, so, you know, after, you know, ran into this exploration, we kind of tried to craft our own. Mm -hmm. Parse so, through it. Yeah, so again, you know, when you're looking for inspiration, ask yourself, you know, why do you like it? What's working about it? And then try to apply it to your own design. And then you create something unique. So we wanted kind of to see that bag with, you know, the system that we were kind of, you know, liking. And then, so here, so more in depth. So I took what we had on the previous board and then started fleshing out, you know, other touch points. Cool. So that looks delicious. We have the Cohen. With the little um, skewer guy. The, yeah, the mm -hmm. skewer. Um, yes, yeah, so we're utilizing backs. a lot of the artifacts that we developed um, mm -hmm. illustrations, a lot of textures, and uh, how do we balance a lot of these things out and not sort of have that that repetitive sort of look and feel, but yet you want to create that cohesive and sort of unified family look. Mm -hmm. And you can do that a lot by color um, and shapes, but it doesn't have to be the same. Like right. Cookie cutter. right? Sort mm -hmm. of play with pushing and pulling on those elements, yeah. and, you, and you can start to see how it stays unified. Gotcha. Yeah, so, you know, what we learned from the bag exploration, I started to apply it. So, you know, we had that, you know, that pink character. So it's like, okay, maybe is that does that start to become a system for something else? Um, nice. And then again, so it seemed to be like that was kind of like the threading artifact, but the illustrations were swapping out. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have that versatility. Yeah, and different scales as mm -hmm. well. Yep. And then, you know, here we have the oh, lanterns and we kind of put the walkie-talkie inserted in Heck there. Heck yeah, that's great. <laughs> Is it like a happy accident or kind of just like, mm, this looks good. Yeah. We're like, oh, this is No, I think it's, fun. yeah, we're it's trying conceptual. to do that sort of cross culture, yeah. this sort of their Tokyo, their Japanese um, heritage with sort of modern sort of urban culture. Right. Mm -hmm. And so because they're sort of millennial chefs that are, are creating this and we wanted to sort of 
sort of pay homage to both sides. So it, right. it, uh, it's a little bit of old and a little bit of the new. And so how do we do that? Um, so it has a little bit of quirkiness and uniqueness and fun, but also, you know, we have some some heritage to that the root of the where Yakitori came from as well as yeah. their sort of family heritage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and then we started doing chopsticks. You know, maybe they have some oh. rice bowls, mm -hmm. and we added. You know, earlier from our mood board, we had kind of had like that texture mm -hmm. that kind of represented like the charcoal, um, and then bringing in. You know, this one has like the WT. Yeah. You know, if it says um, walkie-talkie on one side, does the other side use, you know, a brand abbreviated artifact? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because the, the chopsticks, is ha it's that opportunity when we're talking, um, Christina was talking about walking around mm -hmm. packaging. Yeah. It's not just two-dimensional, it's just not one-sided. Mm -hmm. You actually have all these great sort of facets, and how does one facet interact with the other facet? Right. And so with the chopsticks, it's like, well, what if you flip the chopstick packaging over and then you mm -hmm. butted them next to each other, and then it continues to tell us a deeper story. Right. So mm -hmm. it's those sort of like sort of oh, Easter egg finds that you yeah. have as a consumer mm -hmm. that makes things fun. Yeah. So, you know, after this, we wanted to apply them to some renders, um, just because I know to do a restaurant in an hour and a half yes. <laughs> was kind of going to be hard, but um, I can show you guys the renders that we finished yesterday. Awesome. And this has to do with Tanya's question. Do you create each of the like assets for the, say, the bag design, or do you use graphic elements that someone else designed? I think in this case, you used like flat um, graphic mockups, but mm -hmm. we're also going to be showing you how to make your mm -hmm. own Tanya in Adobe Dimension. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. Yeah, so I think um, eventually you get to that, that stage where you do want to sort of do these mock-ups mm -hmm. and get the lighting and the angles mm -hmm. for presentation for right. when you do it for your client mm -hmm. presentation or ultimately when you have it in your portfolio. So, but when you're doing it, um, when you're ideating it, when you're designing, it's not necessary. It's a lot of sort of wasted effort. Right. So we just kind of like to have those form factors and we kind of just roughly throw these things on it. So they look kind of rough, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is perfectly fine if yeah. you kind of, we, we're looking kind of everything like 10,000 feet from the air. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's good. So we kind of have, you know, our bag. So this is kind of where we ended up mm -hmm. yesterday. Love the texture, you can see through it. Yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that craft bag with the contrast panel. And we have the chopsticks. So these are, you know, fully rendered out now. Nice, do you think they would be black? Like black wooden ones? They could be. That's really yeah. cool. I mean, I've never <laughs> seen got, that before. They got money for it. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> if your client has the budget, why not? Yeah, but it's also, a dream you have, project. Yeah, <laughs> you have that tan color in the color palette too. So mm -hmm. if they didn't, it could just be bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of put the skewers in that cone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting all those highlights and shadows is important. And this one was fun because we took, we had so many great elements, uh, the logo and the illustrations mm -hmm. and brand voice that we created this sort of wallpaper pattern for opportunities to maybe use them maybe in the restaurant mm -hmm. or on the packaging, possibly mm -hmm. in the website. So, and again, it's sort of like balancing these elements out. So mm -hmm. you can see here we have a pattern on the background, but on the previous, like the chopsticks, um, you know, we didn't use that pattern, but we right. had, there's uh, elements that were mm -hmm. also sort of emulating throughout. Yeah, you have the little lantern that you can see in the pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Antonia wants to know, do you work with manufacturers to bring these designs to life? We kind of talked about that yesterday, so be nice working, to vendors. Working with vendors, yeah. yeah. Oh, that box is huge. Yeah, no, working <laughs> with vendors is super important because um, they might have interesting form factors that you're, you're, you're not privy to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and yesterday's tip from one of our designers, Melina, she said, um, become BFFs with your vendors. Mm -hmm. it, it's really that extension of your capabilities to sort of see a project through. So uh, having close relationships with vendors will sort of enhance your design. Yeah. And so it doesn't just stop with what you're doing in front of your computer screen. Mm -hmm. It's what is that sort of handing the baton off, as I like to say, to that next vendor and shepherding that whole process to make sure that the end result is the best that it can be. Yeah. Yeah. So this was, you know, the final touch point, which was a box. And then so now we have these, we'll kind of show you how to put it all together. Nice. But before I move into that, I kind of just want to touch on the dimension real Perfect. Quick. Yeah, so like we said when we were answering Tanya's question, uh, Dimension is an awesome way to mock up your flat graphics on actual 3D models. 
If you have a CC subscription, you can download it right now, try it out. But there's already tons of models that come baked in Dimension, but you can also download them from Adobe Stock. You can download materials, lighting kits. You can even make materials with Adobe Capture, which is awesome. Of course, you got this craft bag. Levitate it. Oh, and you can stretch it. Mm -hmm. You can really customize these things. Yeah. So you can, you know, you know, we were talking about walking around the packaging. Yeah. 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 Seeing that form and seeing all the possibilities of how one facet relates to the next facet. Because mm -hmm. when you're working on the computer, so sometimes you're just looking at just that square, right. that, just that flat. Um, really walk around it. Right. And, and this, this program really allows you to do something mm -hmm. like that. Cool. So she applied a decal to the bag, and you can then scale it up to fit your needs. Since this isn't uh, formatted as a material, it's hard to place it all around the bag, mm -hmm. but you can definitely scale it up and have it fit. And this, this, and this image is texture mapping around the shape, mm -hmm. so it's not just flat. It, it, it's as it interacts with each dimension, mm -hmm. it conforms to that dimension, right. which and is really great. Once we introduce a background and lighting, mm -hmm. those wrapping and those depths in the package will be lighted differently. They'll be in shadow. You can use match image that it will mm -hmm. find the plane of the photograph and then also take the lighting that it picks up from the image and apply it. That's cool. So awesome. Oh, sorry. <laughs> While she's doing that, I see a, I see a question from Pedro. He says, when the client hires you, how much contact you have with the client and or is it just on the early stages and do you continue that relationship mm -hmm. with the client? Um, I think that's a pretty good question. I think you, you two folds. First of all, mm -hmm. when you're building a business, it's really hard to like get clients. Right. And so I don't like to think of it as one and done. Like you have a client, you do the work and then it's like goodbye, we'll never see you again. Right. I want to build not. relationships <laughs> yeah with that client so as they grow then that we continue to grow with them mm -hmm. and if you build a strong relationship then they'll refer you to uh, another one of a client or someone they know and that's how you network and build your client base um, so I believe you always want to have a close relationship stay in constant contact and think about it from the client's perspective if you are the client and you hired someone to design something for you you want to have that communication you don't want to like give them like design a logo then you don't know where they are yeah mm -hmm. you're not getting any response when they send you an email you don't get a response right away mm -hmm. you, you call them and you're not picking up that's not a good relationship no no yeah it's that ghosting thing when mm -hmm. you like text someone it's like where are you and you don't hear them like oh it's do like, you exist anymore? right I don't know. <laughs> no so i think constant contact with mm -hmm. your client and serving them and building that that relationship and that trust that will build long-lasting relationships. So mm -hmm. I believe in just constantly, what I call like shepherding mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. and shepherding the brand, right. and you'll be able to grow with them. Yeah, and that's the way that if they ever need anything else design-wise, they can just come back to you because yeah. they know you do a good job and that you're easy to work with. So yeah, Tanya, this is Dimension. This used mm -hmm. to be called Project Felix, uh, if you've ever heard of that, but it is now officially in the CC ecosystem. I know, so cool, Amber. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, and uh, Christine is showing how you can scale things up, apply a pattern, and then she could mm -hmm. even drop in another model, say like a cup, yeah. or uh, there's even a bag with tissue paper in it that you could apply a pattern to. And then you can super easily render this as a PNG or a JPEG that you can take into Photoshop, edit even more. It comes in um, really nicely. You can change the quality of your render. Mm -hmm. And it might take a couple minutes, and if your computer might be a little older or less uh, strong, it might make your computer heat up a bit, but it's doing some hard work. <laughs> and in the top, Start smoking. Right, in the top right corner, you can see uh, a render preview. I think it's maybe that top right one. Yeah, so if you're not ready to totally render it, not ready to commit to that, um, you can watch it kind of render slowly, pass by pass, and see, is this lighting what I like? Do I need to change mm -hmm. it? But yeah, if you have CC, go ahead and download it and have some fun with it. Cool. Yeah. I shop Christine. Show yeah. the dimension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've sort of built this um, walkie-talkie brand. Uh, we've walked you through multiple steps. I think the the one of the final steps is, I think this is really important for everyone to, once you've designed something for your client, and then you're getting ready to present it or mm -hmm. um, put it in your portfolio, you need to be able to 
uh, presented in such a way where you're telling a story, a brand story. Mm -hmm. So it's typically not just a singular element that you designed. Right. Try to tell the different facets, the, the, give it some voice, uh, establish the colors. So uh, if you go to our Behance page, which is uh, Farm Design, you'll be able to see examples of how, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you were to go to any one of those, there's not just one singular element. Um, there's a, a story that goes through the entire thing, colors and words mm -hmm. and lifestyle sh shots. It's really trying to contextualize it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's super important to be able to sort of deliver that message. And we're gonna do that for Walkie Talkie mm -hmm. um, in a really short sort of condensed time frame. Um, so Christina, can you kind of give them a little insight of like how you do it and then yeah. as we explore that? So I'll open my document up. Um, so typically when we're gonna present to a client, you know, it all starts with that understanding what their needs are and how you can best deliver, you know, your concept and your ideas. So what I like to do even, you know, before I start designing is kind of thinking about the things I'm already going to uh, be spending a lot of my energy in. Okay. So whether it's, you know, I like to create like an outline, even though it's super rough. Yeah. You know, I'm going to thinking, you know, is there a logo here? Is it going to be maybe next to some messaging and the brand artifacts, which is, you know, illustrations or the abbreviated versions of the logo. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna design a bag and I'm probably gonna put it next to a cup. Maybe it's, you know, that's the to-go area. And then I wanna contextualize it with something with like a food image mm -hmm. or someone eating. Um, and then is there like a chef story? Uh, do we show uniform as part of their system? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, earlier I had messaging, but I think I wanna flavor it again below. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't want to have it just in like one area. I think that that's something that needs to be repeated at least two or three times usually, I think is best. Um, so more on to-go packaging. And then maybe there's like a menu or a storefront. And gotcha. then art. So now I'm going to probably start applying my renders to this. Mm -hmm. And then take the consumer or your client through the experience. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you write this like in words as an outline first? Like, all right, I need to include the logo and the brand artifacts, um, or is this a totally visual process for you? To me, oh, uh, you. I sometimes I write it down, mm -hmm. and then I just, you know, then I'll eventually translate into a template that you know the rest of the team can use. Yeah. So I think when you're presenting, you kind of want to present. They don't all have to be the same, but I think there needs to be some foundational structure that the client can understand. Okay. And, and this is sort of a template and it's sort of establishing uh, part of the process to sort of preserve time. Um, so this is, doesn't have to be fixed this way. This is just a, an outline. It can be organic. So as you start mm -hmm. developing it and you start applying uh, the elements that you design onto this template and it just the flow might be a little off, you can mm -hmm. make adjustments. That's mm -hmm. perfectly fine. It's very fluid. But I think having um, proper planning, trusting the process, that these things, you'll be able to preserve a lot of time, you'll get to the point a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I think we do it this way also, just to help us kind of present our final portfolio. Right. So it's kind of like a preview. I mean, it's this stage not gonna be super perfect. There's probably gonna be a bunch of tweaks, right. but at least you kind of get a sense of how it's gonna look on your portfolio already. Right. So this is kind of our formula for how we do it. Cool, and this is mm -hmm. just staying internal kind of, or does yeah. the client see this oh. level? I'm sure um, probably not. No, probably just the client just them. sees like the final concept that we wanna present to them. Cool, mm -hmm. nice. so this is like the backbone. Yeah, this is the skeleton. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, I'll start. Yeah, I think maybe you start here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then if we have time, then we can um, apply something to the storefront. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'll start here, and then kind of yeah. If you want yeah. To Actually, so as she gets sorry, in no. between that, oh, yeah, yeah. you can see our countdown oh, has yeah. turned oh, fun. red, and oh, we only have five seconds left. I know this is like perfect timing. I love yeah. it. Uh, chat. So if you haven't been here from the beginning, make sure that you're watching on Behance. B e dot net slash live is where we live, or you can go to Behance dot net. Click on the live tab. That's where you can find the replays of previous streams. The past uh, couple days with Christine and Aaron are already up there. If you want to check that up uh, out. You can also chat, which is what we're going to want you to do right now. Make sure you're logged in and say something in chat. Maybe mm -hmm. yesterday you asked for tough questions during this yeah. portion. 
Uh, is there anything else you want to ask them to chat to you? There have been some softballs. They've been pretty easy. We need we want some some fastballs. So okay. give us some hard ones if you could. Ask about money. Yeah. Ask about existential crisis. <laughs> what? what else? Too hard. <laughs> Too no. hard. Okay. Let's dumb it down a little that was bit. a fastball. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, make sure you just ask a question in chat or let us know if this is your first time on Adobe Live and uh, what you think of it so far. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you'll be entered into the giveaway. We're going to be giving away this Creative Cloud pillow. Super cool. Has a nice Creative Cloud logo on it. The beautiful Creative Cloud red. Made in America. Overstuffed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice product right here. Um, we're going to be giving this away to one lucky winner. And then also, in about an hour, we're going to be doing some portfolio reviews. So we're going to be picking one person from chat who submits their Behance portfolio to get a review by Christine and Erin. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to focus on graphic design and kind of the full layout of the, of the portfolio. Does it tell a good story? Does it let us know who you are as a person? Um, earlier during Christine and Jessica's stream, maybe we can go to my computer real quick. Mm -hmm. We reviewed Lloyd's um, mm -hmm. review or portfolio and Nolan's portfolio. Very cool. I think no, no, Lloyd was the student, I believe, and Nolan was the chat member. Or maybe it's the other way around. No, I think I'm right. So that could be you. So make sure you get your portfolio submitted. And then we're going to hop over to Aaron's computer while we wait for Oh, I, I saw a question winner. pop oh, up. It was by uh, Ryan Ford. He, mm -hmm. he asked, what if you get stuck in a direction? And I think this is a, a really great question because we all sort of have like, what is that sort of like creative block, mm -hmm. if you will, or what happens when you need to get inspired? Um, so I, I have a, an answer for that, like what we Perfect. like to do, mm -hmm. but do we want to Someone yeah. have a lucky winner? Please, we do have a lucky winner. Do you want to uh, announce the name? Yeah, so it's Cameron Design. Is his last name Design? I hope right? so. Right? He, he was <laughs> destined to be a designer, if that's the case. It's like how my last name is illustrated. Yeah, and so. it's just perfect. <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Cameron. You will be receiving this Creative Cloud pillow. Here you go. Think yes. fast. Just kidding. But Adobe <laughs> Live will be in contact with you in your Behance messages, so make sure you look at those soon and then let's continue with the advice. yeah so um to answer ryan's question i think um we have a tip um that i think answers it for you it's uh our tip is <laughs> so our human resources um <laughs> at our office is shelby I love uh, her. she's okay. a dingo an uh, actual she, yeah it's an actual dingo uh -huh. uh, she comes to the office every day she's uh, doing it for seven years now wow she's probably like senior management by now. She's yeah, she keeps thing. everyone in check. So she walks around <laughs> every station, makes sure everyone's doing their thing, and then she inspires them. She's the goodest girl. Yeah, so <laughs> to answer your question is her tip is to dig many holes. And you know, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so oftentimes when you're, when you're designing something, you, you think you have an idea or you're heading in a certain direction, and what, what we do as creatives is we start to we start to dig down a hole. We start to go down a path, and we keep going down that path, looking for an answer, and we go deeper and deeper. So if if you're not finding the answer, digging down that same hole, it, you're probably not going to find it. Mm -hmm. So I think what the key here is you need to dig many holes. So dig a hole here, explore a little bit, dig another hole, mm -hmm. explore. And it's sort of like what we talk about iterating um, or uh, with your concepts is you jab and move. You do little sprints. You do little right. here. You do little there. Bop, bop, yeah. Bop, bop. Yeah. Like Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yeah. It's like he didn't just stand in the middle of the ring and just get pounded. It's like he, mm -hmm. he came in. He did a little pops. He backs back out. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of the same thing is dig many holes. Don't get stuck in one space. Don't get so um, locked into an idea. So sometimes you're like, I have this, this wonderful idea. But you know what? I think it's when you're designing, we call it design leveling. It's normally the second or third level of, of oh, conceptual thinking is yeah. where the magic starts to happen. Mm -hmm. That first level thinking is, is normally fairly pedestrian. Mm -hmm. And that's what the first thing that comes to your mind. Well, guess what? It's probably the first thing that comes to most people's mind. So you want to sort of like go deeper and deeper into that. In order to do that, you want to dig a lot of different holes. Once you've dug a lot of those holes, I think it's really important to then ideate around oh, okay. those. Yeah. So you have like these big ideas 
then you want to explore and explore. Don't get, again, locked into one look. You want to um, sort of copy paste a lot, don't delete, and you want to be able to compare and contrast. So when you have certain ideas, ideate around that idea and compare and contrast and then jump out of it and go to another hole. Get like that big idea, ideate around it and explore. And from there, you're going to find the answers in the nooks and crannies. And so that's Shelby's wow. words of wisdom. I just imagine her like jumping into a hole, pulling out a dinosaur bone, jumping right. into the next one, getting yeah. like an old shoe. She's like, oh wow. That's it. So mm -hmm. wise, Shelby. Hector says she's too wise. <laughs> <laughs> so wise. I'd love to meet Shelby. She should have come. Yeah, she's she a sweet sit oh, yeah. Right here. <laughs> um, all our dogs to Adobe Live. I would love that, <laughs> actually. So we had another question from our FAO. I think that's Rachel, maybe. Um, how have you learned to elevate your design work to the level it's at right now? Because it's obviously very conceptual on many different levels. And I've noticed from a lot of new designers that they don't know to think about the contrast of your different assets and all of these kind of high level or maybe mm -hmm. nitty gritty things. I think it's, you know, asking a lot of questions. Yeah. You know, with, uh, you know, talk to other designers, your mentors. Um, and I also think like just referencing the masters on online, like yeah. Behance, there's so many, we always reference them and I'm always trying to understand like kind of what their formula is and how I can kind of twist it into my own. Right. Yeah, I think it's, it's always be <clears throat> seeking and learning. Um, I think uh, always have a goal of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, our goal as, uh, as a team at Farm Design is to improve our craft. Mm -hmm. And so that goal is always outside of our reach. And so, um, I think we have certain levels of success and sometimes we have to, it's really important to sort of take a step back and be like, yeah, we did that and you know, high five and it's like, mm -hmm. and then okay, now what can we do to improve on that? Mm -hmm. And so always having the, that goal outside of your reach to improve your craft is really important. So um, I think as long as you're taking those steps um, to try to improve and try to learn, then you're gonna be okay. Yep. Um, I, I love this metaphor of like if you don't have that goal and you're not moving forward, it's really difficult to sort of navigate your way into um, searching for it. Like if, if you're on a bicycle and you're not pedaling, mm -mm. it's really hard to keep that bicycle yeah. upright, right? right? You're just going to like tip over. Right. So as soon as you start pedaling, the bike starts moving forward, it's really easy to sort of sort of to navigate and control mm -hmm. the bicycle. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe in life is always moving forward and it's okay if that bike meanders it's like it doesn't have to be a straight line no. that's perfectly fine just yeah. have a goal and if you think like that when i talk about mindset um, those are the things that will help you improve yes in design there's sort of these sort of skills that you need to acquire right. and you keep improving those skills um, but beyond the skills you need to have a mindset accompanied with that and I think when you have those two things coupled together, you can be really, really successful. Right. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was a whole lot of knowledge dropped on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so true, though. Um, someone was asking a question. Oh, that's a great question, Erica. How do you, what do you think about sticking to one area of design? For example, Erica is interested in branding, but also interested in illustration. Is it good to kind of dilute, or is it better to focus on one thing? It depends. I, I think it's okay that you have a lot of little sk skill sets, right. um, but I, I think you need to ask yourself what you're really passionate about, and you, I think you really need to perfect a certain craft. Um, it, it's kind of confusing for if you go into a meeting and you say, hey, I, I'm looking for a job, I photograph, I'm an illustrator, I'm a writer, I'm a designer, mm -hmm. I can do code. It's like, it's, it's pretty confusing because it's like, the, what are you, what are you, what yeah. can you do? I think if you specialize, and as opposed to putting all your energy into a lot of different areas and just kind of doing them kind of okay, I think if you focus on one area and put your energy to it and you specialize in that one area, mm -hmm. you're gonna be an expert at it. And then you can, but choose an area that you're really passionate about. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so especially when you're building your portfolio, um, same thing with like farm design, 
we have a, a website and I know clients are going there to look at our body of work. And if our body of work is all over the place, it's like it's youthful, it's, um, we're doing different categories and it can get really confusing to the client. A client yeah. is looking for something specific right. and they want to know if you're the answer that can solve their problem. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to address their needs. So we are uh, a branding uh, company that uh, builds consumer packaged goods systems um, and primarily in the food space and that sort of uh, transitions over into the restaurant. So we kind of have a very focused sort of um, uh, skill set uh, as well as a portfolio that uh, uh, has case studies to demonstrate that for clients. So ask yourself, what do you want to do? What are you really passionate about? Mm -hmm. And pursue that. Right. And it's okay to dabble in other things, but what I would advise against is trying to do everything because you're not going to be an expert at one thing if you're just doing all these different things. Yeah, I feel sometimes that when you want to dabble in everything, sometimes that comes from a place of fear. Like, I need to be everything or else I'm not going to be anything. Like, no mm -hmm. one's going to give me work. I'm not going to be the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so true. Focus on yeah. what you're passionate about and the rest will unfold. Yeah. Yeah, Christina says, but if you specialize in one thing, do you think you can make enough revenue to survive on that one type of skill? That kind of goes off of what I was saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think um, there's a, an illustrator here in San Francisco, Jessica Hish, oh, and yeah. she's made an amazing career doing one thing very well, mm -hmm. and that is doing sort of script, hand sort of logos, and that's her specialty. That's what she's known for. Mm -hmm. And it sort of parlays into other things as well. Yeah. But she's known for that. Right. Um, if she did photography and copywriting, then it's like it really sort of dilutes, you know, your brand voice and mm -hmm. who you are. Uh, it's harder to sell. Um, it's okay if you have all those other skill sets, but really have like a, a centralized um, sort of voice, uh, sort of kind of an elevator pitch of like what you do. Right. Totally agree. Cool. So yeah, chat. We've got about forty-seven minutes to get your portfolio submissions in. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be picking one of you. We already have a student that we are going to be reviewing also, and they should be in chat soon, hopefully. Uh, we're really focusing on graphic design portfolios, and um, Aaron and Christine will give their feedback. I'm sure they've both done a lot of portfolio reviews in their time. Mm hmm So it'll be great. Very very helpful. Um, I have another tip. Sweet. Right. So, um, so this tip comes from Molly. She's she's actually a freelancer. Freelancer. Oh. Um, so she's been with us a little while. Um, uh, she's been working on packaging and editorial layout um, at Farm Design, and so she put together a tip that's important to her, and and it's develop your design vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I think this is super important because. Um, what oftentimes happens in school is uh, you're taught certain skills on how to design and technical skills, but I think one big aspect that is sort of overlooked um, is your ability to present. Yeah. Um, being able to stand in front of a, a room of people or a client or even internally in a classroom and, and be able to articulate what you see what you've done. Right. Um, so we're so caught up in like a visual sort of vocabulary, like pretty pictures. But how can you sell that if you can't effectively sell that to uh, your teacher, the students, uh, clients? It's going to be really difficult for them to understand what it is and um, be able to sell that project. Also, it, it's very helpful when you're trying to get new work. Uh, clients are looking for, as, as well as Design studios when they're when they're talking with students, like they want to know who you are and they want to know about your process. Mm -hmm. Your ability to communicate is so paramount. Be able yeah. to be articulate. Um, how can you do that? Molly's tips are, uh, I think, think outside of probably what you know in terms of um, colors and shapes. But if you can give it, uh, contextualize it a little more by using certain senses like. Um, if you use words so, um, that help sort of create a vision using sights right. and sounds and feelings and taste, use those senses and you integrate that into your vocabulary is a much better way to um, sort of articulate and communicate what they're seeing. Um, creating metaphors is really powerful too. Um, 
And she says, study other people's work and describe how you feel and what you see. So I think that's sort of a great way to sort of practice. And the, the best sort of form to practice, especially for students, is when you're in class. You remember that time like when you're in class and it's like the teacher's like, put everything up on the board. Mm -hmm. Everyone puts their art up on the board. Uh, there's normally like two or three students that normally sort of speak up and they're talking about it. And then all the other students, because yep. I've taught, they kind of hang out in the back and they're kind of like sheepish hiding in the corner. Mm -hmm. I think you're really doing yourself a disservice yep. because that is a perfect opportunity to overcome your fear mm -hmm. and do something that makes you feel uncomfortable. And I think that's how you get grow and get better. So yeah. stand up in front of that room and try to communicate what you see, um, whether you like it or you don't like it. And I think either's fine, but if you if you like something, articulate through words why you like it. Right. If you don't like something, that's okay too. But articulate it, be constructive on why you think it's not working and maybe come up with a solution. Yeah. Because um, it's very easy to sort of look at something like in your head say, I like it or I don't like it. But if someone says, but why? Mm -hmm. Then you're, you, you have to sort of, all the neurons and everything, you have to connect and <laughs> yeah. fire and synchronize. Your brain breaks a little right. bit. <laughs> it, it, it activates something that um, is very different and I think it's really powerful, uh, your ability to articulate your ideas with clarity. And she said, language is just as important as visuals when trying to sell your vision. Mm -hmm. So constantly, hone that craft, be able to be a great presenter. Um, so in our office, we do a lot of critiques. It's really important for us to grow and collaborate. Right. Um, it's imperative that everyone speak. So, um, and if someone's having a bad day and they're kind of quiet, I'll be, what do you think? And yeah. try to like shake them out of that mode. Mm -hmm. But it's really important because I value everyone's opinion. And sometimes it, it's easy for um, an art director or a creative director to kind of do most of the talking. But if you can listen and hear what other people see because they see things differently than you, mm -hmm. then you can like, oh, I didn't see that before. That's actually pretty good. And I think that's what's really helpful because sometimes as a creative director, I see something, I like it or I don't like it, but then Christine will say something, her point of view, and I see it differently. Right. And I'm like, it's magic. Yeah, and I'm like, that is a great point. Let's salvage that. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. super important. So being able to present and articulate what you see beyond just sort of design words, think about those uh, other senses as well and help you sort of sell that idea. Yeah, and I think maybe the word sell might be scary to a lot of creatives because mm -hmm. they're like, I'm not a salesperson. Like I, I just want to make art and yeah. eat food and it'll be great. But <laughs> that I thought of selling your vision could also be translated as helping someone else to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if they're just looking at something, nudge them, tell them what this is and how, yeah. how it makes you feel. When I say sell, it's not to like monetize it. Right. it. It's really like trying to help someone see what you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Great, thanks Molly. Is that Molly from the future? It is, wow, people celebrity. In, in chat, no, yes. people in chat were like, is that Molly from the future? Looks like her. Yeah, she's a stud. It's <laughs> awesome. Great, Molly, thanks. And, and we have this pull-up bar in our office, so we like to do like physical challenges. Molly's a rock climber. She did like 12 pull-ups, which a is beast. crazy. <laughs> so cool, I can hang from it. Yeah, <laughs> I won't fall. I can jump and right. grab it. <laughs> cool, wait, aren't there more rock climbers in your studio as yes, well? Yes, we have a couple. Cool. Just attract all the yeah. rock climbers, I guess. Cool. As part of the, the interview process, you have to be able to like hang from this bar we have in our office for three minutes and mm -hmm. he, that's how you get a job there. Mm -hmm. That's how Shelby so that's got her job. that's why we have a job. lot of rock climbers. <laughs> well, dingoes like to climb trees. That's one of their characteristics. Wow. So they like to climb, which is, I'm like, how? when I got her, I'm like, no, that's not trees. So we went to a park mm -hmm. and there was trees and I'm like, let's see. And Go for sure, it. She just ran and jumped up on the tree. She just runs and jumps? Yeah. Wow. That Wild. was a little weird sidebar, but. We always talk about dogs, so it's good. We talked about our dogs yeah. Yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. picture. <laughs> yes. Cool, so you're kind of plowing through this. Yeah, uh, yeah so you know, with the outline, it really kind of helped plan the rest of the presentation. Yeah, easy. Um, normally I'd probably tweak a few more things, but kind of get the idea. So we usually start off with, you know, the brand mark and kind of introducing a few of the graphics that you might see. So, you know, this 
character with the chicken was kind of one that we saw in the bag. Yeah. And then, you know, bringing in the artifacts and illustrations. And then presenting the pairing of the to-go. Um, I put a color behind it just to that. make it a little more graphic. Mm -hmm. um, and then next to the image, I had that in my outline. So I kind of used the one that we had in the brief. Yeah, and that image doesn't have any branding on it. Mm -hmm. It's just to kind of give you a sense of what the product is right. and what kind of space you're going to be in. Because mm -hmm. you start to get a look and a feel. I, I, I think um, mm -hmm. branding is really a gut feeling. So when you see it, you kind of, you certain emotions start to happen mm -hmm. and you start to like or dislike something um, or be indifferent. Mm -hmm. So it's really what that initial, that quick gut feeling is. And so when you can start to contextualize it, it really starts to give it shape to see if like, is that gut feeling, is that brand essence, is it yeah. right mm -hmm. for the brand? Mm -hmm. Nice. Kind of have like the chef. I, I think I maybe put something in there, but no. Yeah. <laughs> it's too small. <laughs> um, so I have, you know, like a chef, maybe uniform. And I think I'd probably swap it. Sometimes I don't like having like two people on one page. Oh, I see. Um, so maybe I'd put something more graphic or mm -hmm. messaging here later. Um, so bringing in more of the illustration, threading that through to go packaging, kind of threading that pink from earlier. Mm -hmm. So kind of have it here and I yeah. kind of want to flavor it more down here just for you know, a balance. Yeah. Even though you're not seeing it at the same time, I yeah. kind of want that experience to be consistent. And I notice that you're pairing the pink with touch points that don't have a ton of that mm -hmm. color on it already, because you need that contrast right. all the time. And then I kind of did like a quick storefront. Um, so that this, you know, it's not real. So I kind of just grabbed something and photoshopped it. I'd probably photoshop this a little more yeah. where, you know, you don't see that yellow. Right. Um, but and then maybe some patterning and then maybe I can so I have this patterning now I'm thinking should I you know thread it higher oh, I think like I think it needs what it's lacking is some like brand messaging. voice and words yeah yeah mm -hmm. so someone said that they love this sort of over and out um, yeah the lingo yeah right, the lingo so that sort of so, um, so those start to give it shape and dimension and so it starts maybe, to create a dialogue with the with the customer so maybe this says over and out since it has the chicken holding mm -hmm. So maybe this moves here. So much thought goes into it. I love it. <clears throat> um, Erica was wondering, another great question. We kind of covered this yesterday, but for a very fresh freelance designer, how do you put together how you would charge and what do you need from each client? Like which, um, what deliverables they need, et cetera, um, et cetera. Who, yeah. Who's that from? Erica. Erica. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, it scrolled up, but just oh. basically saying like, when you're fresh starting out, how do you even put together how to pitch your price? Mm -hmm. um, and then what do you need from a client? Yeah, I think the first thing you do when you're engaging with a client when uh, is to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, you wanna get a sense of who they are, because it, it really it's both. They're trying to understand who you are. Mm -hmm you need to be able to ask questions to demonstrate your your skill uh, as well as to sort of demonstrate the value that you can bring to the particular project and so there's this dialogue and it's sort of like dating it's like mm -hmm. speed dating you're yeah. trying to like is this person right for me yeah <laughs> so you need to ask a lot of questions um uh, understand what their problems are why are they contacting you what are their goals goals yeah and and then you start to get a sense of uh what the deliverables might be. Like, are, is, are you contacting me for a website? Or do you want a brand system? Is it just a logo? Why do you need a logo? So you need to ask these questions. Um, once you've done that, then you start to build this sort of like punch list of deliverables. And that starts to build the, what, what you'll need for a proposal. Right. Um, so when you're putting a, a number together, it's predicated on typically time right. uh, as well as uh, your skill set and value that they see. Um, so in order to uh, sort of gauge what that is, you need to kind of know how much work is going to be involved to do this. Mm -hmm. So you do those punch lists and then you put together a proposal. A, a proposal uh, 
Uh, we like to do sometimes like a, a shopping list of items because sometimes clients don't know exactly what they want. Sometimes mm -hmm. we can make suggestions like, oh, what if you had, in this case, we're talking about restaurants, what if you had a takeout bag? And like, mm -hmm. oh, we never considered that. Or what about uniforms? What if there's right. baseball caps and shirts? Um, so what you can do is you can do line items in your proposal, like a shopping list. So it'd be like uh, website, $20,000, mm -hmm. logo, $5,000, uh, shopping bag, to go cups, X amount. Right. And sometimes you could bracket it as well. It doesn't have to be like a fixed number. Mm -hmm. It could be um, to go cups, it could be $1,000 to $2,000. And then the client will ask, well, what's with the range? Why is it bracketed? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, if it's a simpler design or if you want fewer looks, it might be a $1,000 range. Mm -hmm. Or we can, if it's more complex and requires more illustration styles or customization, it might be on the other end of the spectrum, 2000. Mm -hmm. So you have this list. right? And then you submit a proposal, they look at the number, and then they normally want to negotiate a little bit. Um, but having that sort of that shopping list and you have the bracketing gives you room to say, okay, yeah, we can do it for the lower number, but we might m uh, limit the amount of um, concepts we present or the amount of edits. Right. Um, yeah. I, did that? I think so. Did that answer the question? Totally. Yeah, yeah. It's a big, giant conversation that you yeah, have to it's, have Yeah, it's a tricky client. thing. It really is a tricky thing to um, do proposals. It's something that we're always trying to perfect. Yeah. Um, it, my proposal game was terrible when I first started. It was mm -hmm. like pretty much in an email, be like, $1,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, Please? yes or no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, then, and then uh, it got more and more um, uh, detailed, and we had sort of more... Uh, legal things in the proposal to like, you know, uh, we have the right to be able to present this in our portfolio. Right. Um, yeah. You only get one concept and not all of them and mm -hmm. you, you can't sell these other. So there's a lot right. of things in the legal copy, um, which is important. So um, there's a lot of those that are sort of boilerplate that you can find online. Yeah. Um, sort of legal documents. Mm -hmm. It's great. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you did a little bit of texturing yeah. in here. Um, we had some grit on the bag, so thought I'd kind of flavor that up here mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, added some more messaging. Yeah, the over and out instead of the yakitori your mm -hmm. way. I put that below. So I kind of just have it in it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Simple. Bumping it up because it's just nudging things around. Yeah. Turn it. And then, I mean, these can go pretty elaborate if you're working on it for, you know, your portfolio. Sometimes we like to do, um, we kind of like to showcase the brand toolbox that we use. So whether it's just like a swatch of the texture or the color system and mm -hmm. your fonts, um, you can do that as well. Yeah, cool. And I think on the first day you said you spend like 100 hours getting your projects ready for the portfolio. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Super. Yeah. <laughs> It's so important because it's actually it's an investment in be getting the next project. Yeah. So um, a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis on that. They just craft something and it's like, okay, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can go a lot deeper, because clients are looking for those intangibles. And if you can demonstrate those intangibles, um, they're going to be like, yes, I want that yeah. in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I want that level of detail with my work. And so those are the people that I want to work with. So you need to really demonstrate your ability to um, provide a lot of value and a lot of depth. Right. Um, so, you, so that they can determine that you're going to be the right partner for them. That's awesome. Yeah, you can definitely see that in your yeah. um, projects. Yeah, so yeah, that's another restaurant project. You did a lot of yeah. Palm Springs stuff. Yeah, so the four restaurants were actually under that one hotel. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, so it was um, it was a rooftop pool bar, um, a restaurant so cool. at the rooftop. Mm -hmm. um, there was a bar in the lobby, and mm -hmm. then that little cafe juniper table that we mm -hmm. presented on the first day. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love so it. This is the one. Oh, this is the cider. Yeah, that was the background. Yeah. So cool. Um, Christina was asking an awesome question. There's so many questions about just starting out. Mm -hmm. Uh, but she's wondering, for someone that's going to be interviewing for a design job, mm -hmm. how should you prepare? Like, what questions are normal to be asked? Um, yeah, how, just, how do you prepare? How do you know what to talk about? I think preparing-wise and, you know, 
portfolio wise Mm -hmm. um i think it's understanding what that agency does um you know their homework yeah their work um ask questions related to their work and curate your portfolio related they want to see how you can provide the solutions to what their problems are on a daily basis because i think you have to look at it it's it's not about you it's about them so yeah. as a student, you spend four years, you're designing, you're, you're honing your craft, you're building this body of work, and you take a lot of pride, and you can't wait to like pound the pavement and show everyone, this yeah. is what I've mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. But really, you have to look at it from the potential employer's position. Mm-hmm. The reason why they're looking for someone is because they have problems. Their problems are, I don't have enough people to design logos or design websites um, and I have to find someone to do it. They have problems. The same way that studio, they have clients that they have problems. Mm -hmm. So the reason why those clients go to that studio is because uh, I don't have a branding system for my restaurant or I I need packaging that's more effective because the sales are dipping. And so those are the problems. So they go to an agency and the agency needs to be able to demonstrate how they can solve that problem. So as a, a student, you have to understand who your audience is, who that agency is, understand what they do, and then when you go in, you need to be able to communicate how you can solve their problems. Right. So if they're a web design house, you need to go in there with web design capabilities. Like, I'm a web developer, I have great programming skills, I've yeah. done these sort of things, mm-hmm. and I can come in, I can solve those problems right away. If you're a branding agency such as Farm Design, we're looking for people who can come in and say, I built these systems before. Or um, I, um, and here's some examples of that. Um, I, I'm really good at, um, uh, at logos, and I notice you do a lot of logos and packaging, and here's some examples of that. Mm-hmm. But if you go in and you notice that we don't do any websites and all you're showing me are websites, right. then you clearly haven't done your homework and you're not solving any of my problems because like, mm-hmm. we don't need a web designer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So know your audience. It's not about you, it's about them. Tell them how you can help them out, and mm-hmm. then you're going to show value. I think another thing is, you know, when you're showing your portfolio or curating it, you don't have to show, like, 20 pieces. Um, I think it's always good to show, you know, maybe it's three. Yeah. Three solid portfolio yeah. pieces that you're super proud of. Um, you never want to present something that you're iffy about mm-hmm. or say something like, Oh, but I'll change that later. Uh-oh. I think it should always be something that you're proud and, you know, this is the yeah. work that's going to represent you. So, you know, this is kind of Don't weird. make excuses. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like you're stepping in your own coffin when you do that. It's oh, like, no. <laughs> really, don't make excuses. Uh, own it. Yeah. And because oftentimes, especially right out of school, they'd be like, oh, I, I intended to spend more time on this. Or it's like, I, I don't want to know that. No. Then it goes back to that presentation. Yeah. Have confidence, articulate, communicate mm-hmm. what you've done. And it, it's those abilities mm-hmm. will uh, allow me to see how you might fit in. And if you're really good at presenting and articulate, mm-hmm. um, be like, this person would be really great in meetings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of value to that. Totally. Um, or in the other areas as well. And they don't may not have to be a great designer per se, not yet, but if they're really good at sort of identifying what works and doesn't work, so in group critiques, they could say, this is what I see. Mm-hmm. They may not know, necessarily know how to execute it. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if they can identify what it is that's working or not working, that's incredibly valuable. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you know, when you're talking about your your work, um, you know, be confident and sell it. Um, you know, they don't have to know that it's a student project. You can no. present it like you worked with a real client. You know, that's kind of like the level and confidence that you should come in with. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think you should go and be like, I'm a student. Yeah. It's like no. I'm a, a designer. Yeah, you're a designer. That's this in is school. the start of your career. So. Totally. I didn't know that, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, great answer. Mm -hmm. Cool, and uh, Paul Tranny's in the house. He wanted to say hello to Aaron, and that Aaron is a hardcore runner and did a Spartan last year in Hawaii. Yeah. He's He's dipping all your secrets. Aaron's like, which one was that? And Paul did one, too. He did one in Colorado or something. Wow. Beast. 
Be yeah, smiling, so both of you. high five to Paul on that one. <laughs> What's up, Paul? And yeah, everyone, if you are just tuning in, we are here on Adobe Live. We're on Behance. Make sure you're watching at be.net slash live. If you're over on YouTube, come on over to Behance. Hang out with us. We already did our giveaway for the awesome Creative Cloud pillow. I believe Cameron Designs won that, so congrats. Cameron, and then you can see right below us, there's a little deadline countdown uh, to get your portfolio submitted so that Aaron and Christine can review it at the end of the stream. We'll be spending about 15 or 10 to 15 minutes on each portfolio that we do. There's gonna be one from a student and then one from one of you. And I'm really excited to hear. Hopefully, mm -hmm. I think I'll learn too mm -hmm. from your reviews. Awesome. Yeah. Someone asked about proposals. I, I'd like to be able to show one. I'm gonna. Sure not go to the numbers just because this is a project we're currently working on. Mm -hmm. um, but our proposals look something like this. Like I mentioned before, it used to be just an email. Yeah. Then it became a one page, like, uh, you know, I broke it down a little bit, mm -hmm. a proposal. And then the next one might be two page proposal where it has more sort of legal. Um, and then the, like the next version of my portfolio might have like a sign off, like mm -hmm. now it's official. Yeah. So I just keep evolving. Um, so this is what a typical proposal looks like for um, us. Um, we normally like to do an introduction and we like to craft a, a message for them to make sure that, let them know we understand what the project is and how we might be able to help them. Um, and we even like these little details, whoops, do that. <laughs> Yeah. These little illustrations really of like we're planting a seed, we're building this relationship. Yeah, so cute. all these little details. Um, uh, examples of our work because we know what we do but sometimes we get a lot of clients saying you know can you send me a proposal they might not necessarily understand what you do yeah you know they're, they're vetting out other multiple agencies to try to find the right fit mm -hmm. and so we we try to go a little bit deeper and try to say you know this is kind of what we do to, right. to allow them to give them enough information to decide if you are the right agency to choose from like to demonstrate show who the team is hey it's you yeah mm -hmm. so here's like a lot of a lot of people we've been talking about in non-illustration form. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there's a lot of, uh, Shelby's not in this one, but. Oh, Shelby. Yeah. Maybe they're not dog people. Oh, there's Shelby. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, she's, there's, there's, she's taking a nap. But um, yeah, so this is, get to know, because like I t said earlier, business is about people. And I, I want uh, our clients to work and understand that they're gonna be working with this entire team. It's not just me, it's not these, a bunch of layers of, yeah. It's like you're working with everyone, and we like to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talk about, you know, how like a little bit of process, just really high level, to wow. give them a sense of like how we work. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we'll do case studies, so we'll craft specific case studies um, for them, so they can say they can say like, again, it's not about us; it's about them. Like, how would we fit in to solve their problems? Right. And so we like to curate certain case studies specifically for them. So we picked three case studies. Yeah, how do you pick? Well, we want, when we have that phone call um, or we're, we're, we're at our meeting, we're mm -hmm. talking with, I want to understand who they are, um, <clears throat> what their product or service or what their pain points are, yeah. and why they're, why they're in the room even talking to us. Because I know there's, there's an issue or problem that they want yeah. to make it go away or for us to solve. And so then we have case studies that might have been very similar that we can communicate and say, gotcha. here's a project that we did recently that is very similar to yours, and we can demonstrate how we solved it with them. Mm -hmm. And then that gives them some context to say, oh, yes, I like how they're thinking, their strategy, their mm -hmm. tactics, to be able to execute that. And so that's what we're trying to do. And so then we kind of looks like this, and we use Calafia in this case as a potential case study. Again, we're curating everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here's another project that we did. Uh, it was a rebrand. A lot of these, I think, was they have an existing brand and they want us to rebrand it. And so what we're demonstrating is, is that um, sort of before and after type stuff. Yeah. Little eye candy. And then it goes into the proposal part and then here has numbers associated yeah. with it. Right. Um, so it kind of looks like that. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. I think that's super helpful because you hear like send them a proposal as mm -hmm. advice and it's like, well, what is an actual proposal? Like yeah. is it an invoice? Like what Yeah. What is? Steve says very impressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Hector wants to know is there a conflict of interest for a designer to work on similar category clients like working with several restaurants 
or something like that. I think for restaurants, probably not. Mm -hmm. But I think if they're a larger agency, let's say you're doing like this big coffee brand and then with another coffee brand, mm -hmm. that might be a conflict of interest. Yeah, they might ask you um, to sign a non-compete mm -hmm. or something. Well, I think it's really, I think if you're working with a company, you're oftentimes uh, get a lot of insight and are privy to a lot of um, proprietary information. Yeah. So it's certainly you do not want to share that proprietary information. Of course. Um, and so normally you sign an NDA or non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes certain clients want exclusive contracts. Like we're going to engage with you to work on uh, like designing cheese, like packaging for cheese. And we don't want you to work with any other company to do cheese because we, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to share a lot of stuff in our process. Mm -hmm. And you can choose or not choose to do that sort of exclusivity. Yeah. Um, but I think obviously we want to honor and respect uh, things that are proprietary and confidential with our clients. So typically we've never really encountered anything that is a conflict of interest right. um, because we want to respect and, and um, make sure we keep everything private. Um, but no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. we don't want to take a logo that we did with one client and no. like, <laughs> oh, like it's just swap out the type and give it to another client. It's like mm -hmm. we, we treat everything. We don't have any templates. We build everything from scratch mm -hmm. using our process. Right. So typically we don't have that conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think maybe, Hector, you might run into this more if you like work in-house for something and then mm -hmm. do freelance on the yeah. side. Like I know when I worked at a clothing company, there was a list of other companies that I like could not <laughs> freelance for or there's a certain amount of time that after I left, I couldn't work for them. So, yeah, he says thanks for the answer. We got some good questions today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Christina keeps firing them off, but I don't want to overwhelm you with, with questions. Mm -hmm. uh, she wants to know, do designers ever worry about being typecast where they're known for one style and end up doing it forever and not getting much variety in the projects? Mm. I, I, I mean, I think they do, but... It, um, for us, um, what I've learned, I mean, people will hire you for what you do best, but for me personally, I think, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say I have a particular style because I think for me, it's when I'm trying to understand the client, I kind of have to adapt my creativity and vision to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you do have a style that meets their needs, that's perfectly fine. But I think for me, uh, what I found most helpful is being able to go different directions and as Aaron said be able to dig different routes just because brands have different personalities yeah, you need to evolve and I think it's okay to specialize mm -hmm. and I think that's how you're gonna be able to generate a lot of leads because you, people are gonna find you or refer you because you do one thing really well mm -hmm. but I think it's also really important to evolve your craft and so don't get complacent and just settle in one space I think one great example is when I was a, a student in school, um, there was a designer, uh, her name is Margot Chase. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked up to her, she was amazing. Absolutely amazing. She had a very specific style, very gothic. She did the Dracula logo. Cool. Um, and so I would, I would buy books just because her logos were in it. And this is mm -hmm. when there was, the internet wasn't a thing. So you had yeah. to buy books. <laughs> so I would book? buy books. <laughs> if I could scrounge enough pennies to buy a book, I would. And, and a lot of her work was in it. And I would just like dissect her work, and it was it was very gothic, and she did the Madonna logo, so everything had a very specific look, mm -hmm. and she was able to do that for a while, and then that gothic look started to started to trend, started to fade. Yeah. And so what did she do? She evolved, mm -hmm. and so she's just as much viable now as she was then. She's built a team in doing so. Um, so Chase Design uh, is a, a collection of amazing designers who are constantly evolving. So I think that's the key. It's, it's, it's really great to specialize. Don't mm -hmm. get complacent. You always have to evolve, yeah. improve your craft. Right, and I can say more from an illustration standpoint that there is a lot of kind of pigeonholing when people see like, mm -hmm. oh, you draw animals, like draw me an animal. And there's a lot of talk of if you don't want to draw it, don't put it in your portfolio because <laughs> that is the thing that people are going to hire you for. We've got Levi in the house. What's up, Levi? Hey, Levi. Hey. 
And uh, Christina, no worries about asking a lot of questions. I was just playing. Keep them coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know you're curious. It's good. Cool. Do you have something that you'd like I, to share? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we have, a, as we've grown and we talk about mindset, um, I, I think we talk about early on day one, we talk about farm 1.0 and farm 2.0, where we are today. And farm 1.0 is is I think a lot of designers right out of school, I just wanted to design. I was trying to get clients and mm-hmm. I was like always looking at the sort of the bank account, like where those numbers are. Yeah. And it was really focused on me. Like, what am I going to do mm-hmm. for me? Um, and and so I needed to change a lot of the mindset of um, how I can grow and how to grow the business as well. So personally and as well as the business. And so I, I started thinking about what are those things that allowed for me to grow as well as for farm design to grow. So we we put we have like four mantras and they're on our website as well. Cool. Um, uh, Melina, uh, baby grandma in our office. <laughs> oh um, yeah. Yeah. BBG. <laughs> she did some of these illustrations uh, for us, but it's like trying to encapsulate what we believe in and. One thing is once I moved out of being a solopreneur and working with uh, fantastic designers, um, I really learned the strength of collaborating and working with other people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think by nature we're we're social creatures. We we want to interact. And so um, I believe sort of running impacts and collaborating. Um, That's how you learn. That's how you grow. Um, And and, it also is a certain accountability thing with running in packs as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think there's a saying that it's easy to let yourself down, but it's harder to let others down. Mm-hmm. So when you're working with other people, you're more empowered and you work together to sort of lift mm-hmm. everyone up. So I'm, right. I'm a big fan of collaboration. That's I know. behind us. We're all yeah. collaborating and covering yeah, yeah. it right now. <laughs> and so a perfect example of, you know, uh, we were showing Bivouac, you know, it's been on the, the screen behind us, is it was this huge system, but what it was, it was uh, our client actually said, who designed that? And then we, you know, I had to stop for a moment mm-hmm. and literally every single person in our office had a hand on one component or another yeah. in mm-hmm. that. And that's what made, I think, that project mm-hmm. work mm-hmm. so well. This um, is gnarly. <laughs> yeah, so. It's Aaron. <laughs> this yeah. is Aaron. I love to surf. I actually moved to Mon- <laughs> I Like I mentioned, I was in Montana. There wasn't a lot of surfing in Montana. Not a lot, no. It was like rock surfing or something. <laughs> so when uh, uh, in my early 20s, I, I changed my major from architecture to graphic design, and I moved to California where I have a lot of family oh, to, gotcha. to surf. Mm-hmm. And so this is a little, I guess someone kind of drew me. I guess when I don't shave, I might look like this. I don't know. <laughs> But being, being unique is really important. I think as individuals, be confident in who you are. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also a, an extension of when we're designing and we're working with the clients is we want to understand who they are and we want to express to their consumers the uniqueness and those unique benefits of why you yeah. want to work with them. Totally. And being creative um, and embracing that quirkiness or being different I think that's where the magic oftentimes happens. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) this was a a project that we were playing with. It was uh, um, a skincare for uh, yeah, young boys, teenagers, Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, so we wanted to, instead of taking a pedestrian route and just designing something that looks like shampoo and body deodorant that's on the shelf, we wanted to like explore and be different and be unique. And so here's some early mood boards. it's a logo and then sort of uh, one of the ideations that we, we came up with. Cool. So we're really embracing like how can we be different. Mm-hmm. Um, seeking opportunities is one that's really important. I think we ca- would probably say that word a lot through the last uh, few days is is finding opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's really easy to sort of like sit back and just wait for things to come to you. Um, I'm a big um, proponent of finding opportunities and so there's a saying like um, if no one's knocking on the door build a door yeah right mm-hmm. build another door it's like don't just sit back and wait for something to fall out of the sky if mm-hmm. you're active and you're moving forward and you have a goal and a vision 
opportunities will come. Yeah. But, and then when I talk about um, sort of paying attention, when you're looking for those things and you're that, that brain is filtering out and looking for those opportunities, you're more apt to finding them. Mm -hmm. So you always want to um, be active. Mm -hmm. It's okay to make mistakes. Do a lot of things. Constantly grow. Fail. Yeah. It's okay mm -hmm. to fail. Yeah. That's how you learn. That's but good. that's also you're generating opportunities in life. Mm -hmm. So don't remain stagnant. And I think, you know, when we first started, we didn't have, you know, all these restaurant clients yet. So we didn't, you know, we didn't have anything to show. So Aaron and I created a hypothetical restaurant. And once we posted that, then the phone started ringing. So in huh. that sense, you know, if you want to work for something or someone, um, create a piece that'll, you know, grab that, you know, clientele. Um, then you're creating the opportunities to work for them. Yeah. That's really cool. And I think mm -hmm. making a lot of students come out of school with a portfolio of very like school brand projects. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you do like, I'm just going to design a restaurant mm -hmm. as a personal project. Yeah. That's where some really cool stuff can happen. Of exploration. Yeah. And, and we're talking on that uh, sentiment is if you're a student and, a, and the project is design a shampoo bottle, let's say, um, I would encourage you to take the opportunity to go from there, but build it even further. Mm -hmm. So maybe you do deodorant and maybe you build an ad advertisement campaign yeah. mm -hmm. or a website, uh, you know, a splash page. Build that system out, create your own opportunity. So when you go into that job meeting, you demonstrate something greater than just that one singular item. Yeah. And you're going to learn in that process too. But it's like, mm -hmm. you really got to be hungry. And because if you're not doing it, I guarantee there's some other student doing it. Right. Some student that's getting their, mm -hmm. yeah. their money's worth. And the, uh, the fourth thing that we, we really believe in is goal setting. And it's aiming higher and yeah. um, getting out of your comfort zone and um, trying to reach for something greater than yourself. And I think um, one thing that we do as a team at Farm Design is we all um, have a like-minded vision of trying to improve our craft in trying to um, elevate what we're doing as individuals as well as a team. And so in order to do that, we're always trying to reach for something outside of our reach. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, complacency moving. is the, um, the enemy of, of growth. And so um, don't, don't get stagnant. So always try to reach for something that is outside of your reach. Yeah. This is great. Thanks for sharing kind of yeah. your core tenants mm -hmm. and these awesome illustrations. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So we have like seven minutes until we're going to do the portfolio reviews. Mm -hmm. Did you want to do your overview or oh, move yeah. back oh, to yeah. Christine and see oh, what she's been working on? Do you want to take on? a screenshot of... Oh, yeah. Or maybe we can then just jump to your screen afterwards. Yeah, we just Okay. Um, guess let's do... So much talking for you. I hope your throat's okay. Oh. <laughs> Because you got portfolio reviews coming up after this. I like portfolio reviews. Oh, um, yes. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Okay. <laughs> Munir says, fail means first action in learning. <laughs> nice, Munir. I like that. Um, okay, to summarize uh, how farm design, how we like to build brand systems for restaurants, and I think a lot of this does sort of parlay over into designing package design, mm -hmm. um, really any aspect of graphic design. I think there's a lot of sort of close parallels that you, you can learn. So this is just a, um, a recap of what we've been doing this week. Um, so I think the first thing is always you need to have a roadmap. You need to have a foundation. And so a lot of that comes from asking a lot of those questions with the client, um, challenging them, um, and so we do a lot of, we send brand questionnaires, we build a, a, a very robust brand deck to gather a lot of the information that we need, which are uh, asking, we think, four really pillar questions, which is, who are you? Who needs, needs to know? Mm -hmm. uh, how will they find out? And the last and most important is, why should they care? Yeah, so a lot of that establishes mm -hmm. that road, that brand roadmap for all the designers as well as the client to sort of constantly refer to as we go down this path. Mm -hmm. So have a foundation before you start. Um, so now that you have some parameters, 
I think having a well laid out plan is important. So we, we don't want to just sort of meander. We don't want to shoot in the dark. Mm -hmm. um, have a process. It's the I mean, process, process, process is mm -hmm. so important mm -hmm. to be effective mm -hmm. and to be proficient and efficient with your time. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we um, assemble a lot of the brand artifacts, you know, curating the right photos, textures, mm -hmm. um, getting logo inspirations, building that, that mm -hmm. sort of that uh, toolbox that you can draw from as you start to go down that, that creative process. Right. Um, and what we like to do at Farm Design, and I think a lot of people, they build mood boards. We, we like to do these things called brandscapes, which is a little more of an elaborate mood board where we create these sort of organic mosaic type mood boards where we start to find um, opportunities in, in our design. Mm -hmm. And so we like to do a lot of mm -hmm. brandscapes and um, spend very little time doing those don't. So a lot of these take maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. Sprints. Yeah, getting that sort of 10,000 foot in the air, sort of gut feeling, does it start to feel right? And if it doesn't feel right, get rid of it. Start yeah. another one, dig another hole. Mm -hmm. Then they're saying, um, uh, get the right idea and then get the idea right. So early on, mm -hmm. you want to get that concept mm -hmm. and then you want to be able to learn how to execute that concept. Right, that's really cool. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and then we refine that brandscape and try to dial it in colors. And we started here. We, you know, we started acting craft, crafting our own logos. Uh, we started designing our illustration styles and just dialing it in. Started to build brand voice with mm -hmm. words. So that's refining those brandscapes. And then you go into that ideation stage, um, where you're you're throwing a lot of things against the wall, high level, big picture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not not focusing on the details just mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. So a lot of you know again contrasts where you push and where you pull, um, trying out you know if you have a collection of artifacts, mm -hmm. try a bunch of those things on different touch points and see how they work as a cohesive brand system. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. And then after you sort of uh, do ideations, then you start to settle and you start to focus on a direction that's starting to work for you and then you start applying them to your various touch points, um, whatever those might be for your, your particular client. Packaging, it could be a website, it could be a brochure. You start applying them, just start to see how that works. And this is what we started to do. You see it's not, it's not perfect, doesn't have to be. You can see things are not cropped properly. There's yeah. some weird, a lot of overlapping. But from 10,000 feet in the air, you start to get a sense of it starts mm -hmm. to Definitely work as a system. A feeling for sure. Right. So after you've done the applying the touch points, then, um, I didn't finish this here, but this is tell the brand story, which mm -hmm. is what Christine has been working on, mm -hmm. is taking those and you, we, we flushed them out, we dialed them in, we put polished them more by doing the, the renderings mm -hmm. um, and then sort of curating, curating telling that the Contextualizing. Depth. Yeah. Nice, and I, did you, oh, you kept the two humans. Kept cool. the two humans, I'd probably, you know, swap that out. Mm -hmm. Nice, and that actually shows like a little illustration of the product mm -hmm. and then the actual product. Right, so you can, you know, take out those illustrations out and present them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes for our portfolio, you know, if it's something elevated, sometimes we'll even do like a little render graphic treatment to it. So it'll look like it's like um, gold foil yeah. or embossed nice. sitting on like a textural paper mm -hmm. um, just to give it a little more polish. Yeah, and but if you are from here. Yeah, if you are just tuning in, we also showed how to apply your flat graphics, so stay that little illustration and put it on an actual 3D model mm -hmm. in Adobe Dimension and in that way you can literally walk around the touch point and see how it all interacts mm -hmm. together. Cool, and mm -hmm. the physical space at the bottom. Yeah, what so like? you know if it's not real yet, you can grab a photo and do some, you know, Photoshop work to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know when the, you know, when the restaurant's up or your project is actually out there, and you can take real photography. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. So that's a start to finish yeah. of what farm design do. Yeah. yeah. That's what they do. So screenshot those, yeah. <laughs> and then I print it out, pin it next to your computer, but I think at least it's a framework that works really well for us at farm mm -hmm. design, yeah. having that process. And the one thing that we also do is Though we have a process, we're constantly tweaking it. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I learned in business is 
that there's a dial and you never just set the dial and walk away. Mm -hmm. You're always constantly tweaking that dial left and right. And if it doesn't work, you tweak the other direction. Mm -hmm. So in business, constantly tweak it and mm -hmm. constantly improve. And so when there's new um, techniques, um, we try implementing it into our process in, in every little facet and stage. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then we're gonna embrace it and try to make it better. Yeah. And so we're always about trying to grow and become better at our craft. Mm -hmm. And then when we, we learn that, then we want to share it. So I, I think one of yeah. the most fulfilling <laughs> things in life mm -hmm. is being able to help other people succeed and grow. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yuri actually in chat just said that this is going to be her go-to master class because awesome. there's so yeah. much good <laughs> information in here. And she also says she loves, the, she approves of the Japanese culture side, <laughs> being a Japanese woman. <laughs> awesome. Nice. So this has been such perfect timing today because we just hit the deadline for the portfolio submission okay. reviews. Yes. So we're going to look through your submissions, pick one of your portfolios to review. And we also have some student portfolios that were submitted previously that we already have uh, ready to review. So let's take a, f a little trip and oh, meet yeah. up in space for these portfolio oh, yeah. reviews. Oh, yeah. Didn't forget about Where that, Where are we you? going? Who knows? <laughs> All right, let's go. Welcome to space, the Adobe Space Station. Whoa. <laughs> In space, you just kind of yeah. rock back and forth forever. Oh, you can breathe. <laughs> yes, oh, you I can. thought, oh, okay, the air is good to breathe. You had your mask up. I was concerned. We are oxygenated okay. up here. So, uh, welcome to the space station, Aaron and Christine. This is where we do our totally <laughs> confidential portfolio reviews. And our first reviewee is a student. Her name is Alyssa Oliver, and she's a student at Sam Houston State. University. All right. I'm taking mine off. Feel free to do oh. whichever you would like to. Like it. Feeling it's at pretty home. Cool. Cool. So uh, Alyssa is a student. And first, we like to kind of just look at the entirety, at the 10,000 feet view, as you might mm -hmm. say, um, of the portfolio. So we learn a little bit about her, graphic designer and musician working hard to land a job doing graphic design within the music industry. So that helps us know what her interests are. And do you have do any of these projects really jump out to you that you want to reveal? Well, first thing is uh, I love the breadth of work mm -hmm. that she yeah. has. Like she's, she's crafting something and she's putting it out there. She, there's no fear. And no. She, so I, I, some people want to just do make it absolutely perfect. I'm not saying that these aren't perfect, mm -hmm. I, I'm, but I, I can tell that she is very um, prolific in yes. her efforts. Mm -hmm. and. So this is where it starts. Build as much content as you can. You're going to learn through that process. And so she's putting it out there. Mm -hmm. At some point, you might want to edit it when you actually have for your portfolio right. or what you're presenting to a client because it might be a bit overwhelming. But I think this is a perfect form to just play with it, get feedback. So I think that is really cool. So this is her website. This is yeah, the actual I really website. like how bold it's looking, mm -hmm. and that I can tell that she's you know putting a lot of thought into her renders and right. mockups. Cool. So let's jump into one of them and get a, kind of a deeper Did dive. So is, she looks like she has an illustration style. Yeah. So, as well, what is the um the pink and blue one just this right one? there? What is that? Let's just that see. illustration alone is yeah really stimulating. Oh wow, and you can see the mock-ups. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So she's not just showing the art, she's contextualizing it, mm -hmm. giving it a sense of scale. Yeah, a little bit of story down here. It is um, Blade Runner sequel inspiration. That, can you go back up? I'm sorry. That is sure. ridiculously yeah. cool. <laughs> nice. That is a lot sick. of depth and dimension and colors are great. Hierarchy, mm -hmm. scale, balancing out. She's flavoring colors. A lot of those sort of rules. Right. And then you can tell how she's sort of like experimenting and breaking some of those rules. Totally. Oh, yeah. Wow. And as That's an cool. illustrator myself, I know that a lot of my peers kind of fall into this camp of like, I, I made a picture. Here you go. But Alyssa's really taking the graphic design bent and being like, I'm going to tell the story behind this image and I'm going to use these graphic design elements to tell its story. Wow. 
Yeah, nice job. Let's keep going down. Was I'm oh, sorry. Sure. Was there more below that? I think just the story and then this kind of finished edit right here. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. Nice. So that, let's, I love it. Let's jump into some of the like packaging, yeah. product design. Uh, maybe running parallel. Let's do this one. Sure. By Maximo Park. So it looks like uh, music industry. Definitely, you're making the work that you want to get. So that's great. It looks like she's implementing a lot of her illustration styles into it. It looks like there's, mm -hmm. if that's the case, there's some range as well. This one is more linear. Yeah. The mm -hmm. other one had more shapes and color. It was very uh, color sort of forward and bold. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, she's so, showing range. Um, so I think she's uh, demonstrating uh, uh, an acumen for design and illustration. Right. And she does it well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think this is one of those things where um, she's doing multiple things, mm -hmm. doing it well. Yes. Um, and if she wasn't good at one, then I would probably say maybe you should, you could hire someone to do that mm -hmm. or perfect it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she's confidently doing it well. And I think she has like the good use of, you know, contrast per whether this is like pages. So mm -hmm. she kind of has one that's a little more simple and she's using, you know, a lot of negative space, which is nice because yeah. I think, you know, a lot of beginning designers, I'm guilty of doing it too, was I made everything fill up the page. Oh, yeah. And I think what I learned is, you know, having that breathing room is always really nice to have. It's all very well composed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So do you see anything in here that you might tweak or maybe that she can strengthen uh, to make it even better? Mm. <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. I, I, I Honestly, I don't. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> yeah. She's using a lot of the techniques that we would implement. Um, there's a lot of sort of micro and macro. She's yeah. applying them to various touch points. Mm -hmm. Even the background, um, sort of bringing that color into it, you start yeah. to get a sense of what this mm -hmm. the system is right. because it feels very unified. Mm -hmm. and this um, detail of having the grayscale person yeah. because there's no I other colors. I, uh, well, the, if you scroll further down, mm -hmm. Uh, so it's right after We're this. It's a hard time breathing. Um, <laughs> I kind of was unclear about this, so I don't know if there's a better way of perhaps presenting this so to make it more clear. Cool. What is unclear about it to um, you? I guess I wanted to know <coughs> if it was being used, so I think I know this is like a website, yeah. is it, I think. Yeah, it's Twitter. A, a website. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe the desktop is mocked up, and then oh, you can cool. have you know, maybe the mobile or tablet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mock all of them up. Yeah. I think I think this is a style that's happening now, but I think I at least want one thing that tells me it's like a digital component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just kind of taking it one step further. Okay, we probably have time for like one more project. Let's pick another packaging mock-up. Let's go back here to A Clockwork Orange. Well, so now it's like a book jacket. Yes. So designed the layout, the editorial, but also the illustration. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. 2007 oh, Adobe cool. Design Achievement Whoa. Awards. Very cool. So you're kind of giving your credentials in here. Mm -hmm. And I notice here it's very much more just like, all right, here's a finished product. Here's this. And it doesn't tell as much of a story, perhaps, mm -hmm. as the previous project did. Yeah, I think there's opportunities to, like you said, uh, Kathleen, is give it more depth. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is one of those cases where this is what I designed, here it is. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Giving it more de depth in terms of you could do maybe more micro, macro. I maybe mm -hmm. want to see what the texture is on that book cover. Is right. it linen? Yeah. Can you zoom in? Is it foil stamped? Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can uh, contextualize it with maybe there's, it's hold, someone's holding the hand. Yeah. I, I'm curious what the story is of the yeah. book. So maybe there's maybe there's imagery. There's imagery to sort of give me a little mm -hmm. insight mm -hmm. on what that, that story is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I really do like is how the book jacket and the actual hardcover book, there's contrast. So yes. if that book jacket was ever removed, mm -hmm. you're getting this sort of like contrast between the two. Mm -hmm. She's not doing a cookie cutter like um, the jacket and the book are the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she's creating that opportunity uh, with the different levels to sort of t um, give it more depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, I think this is yeah, a stronger cool. design compared to this, but that's just what my eye mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. goes it's, it's towards. It's certainly bold, yeah. yeah. Pop up the shelves. Bold, for sure. 
Cool. So great job, Alyssa. Thank yeah. you so much for submitting your portfolio. You're obviously well on your way with your Adobe Design Achievement Award mm -hmm. semifinalist. Super cool. So thank you, Alyssa. All right, let's. Yeah, hop kudos over. to Alyssa. That was yes. that was impressive. I appreciate that one. I'm gonna hop over to I believe it's Alessio Varvara, graphic design, graphic and visual designer, junior art director from Italy. So this is one of you in chat. Hopefully you're still here, Alessio. Um, we picked your portfolio to review. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if we can learn anything about Alessio. We can we can learn lorem ipsum dolor sit amet. <laughs> nice, <laughs> love that. <laughs> Got funny. a little bit of work experience. Cool, mm -hmm. some links. Great. And does he have a website as well? I don't see link? any link. No. Okay. Yeah, he has a Facebook page. Uh -huh. That might be personal, perhaps. So would you recommend having a link to a more in-depth portfolio? Um, possibly. I think having some sort of um, um, contact, uh, so people who are very interested in your capabilities, that mm -hmm. they have a, an easy way to find you. So there, you can prob I think you can email it through Behance. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, to show your professionalism, also having a website mm -hmm. will um, level up that sort of professionalism right. and tell a, a deeper story that um, Behance may not be able to do. Um, so having that sort of uh, that contact mm -hmm. reference mm -hmm. yeah, is definitely. gonna be really important. And chat, if you've never heard of my portfolio, it's actually an awesome uh, oh, yeah. tool that you can take your Behance portfolio and then shoot it through an awesome website filter to make a beautiful portfolio like my portfolio is basically my portfolio from Behance, but just with a beautiful template. And if you have a CC subscription, this is included mm -hmm. in uh -huh. your price. You can also just um, subscribe to it separately. So and those are really easy to sort of plug and play and develop and, and customize, right? So mm -hmm. there's no excuse to not have a website because you can literally create a website in a day, right? Mm -hmm. And Less the great thing about <laughs> website, it's dynamic. So mm -hmm. it, you can constantly tweak it and, and improve it, add it, edit. And so don't make it don't release it when it's perfect. Yeah. Just get something out there and constantly refine and refine and refine. Got that dial. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the great thing about dynamic. I, cool. I think the first thing I see from the high level um, with what Alicio is doing is uh, his confidence in colors and shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, he it looks like he's exploring a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, um, from high level, it's very stimulating. It's bold. It mm -hmm. looks very confident. Yeah, do you want to uh, pop into one? Yeah, I'm curious like sort that. of like his applications and, and what sort of formats he likes to work with. The one you're hovering over. This one? Oh, this silly. Oh, maybe this guy. Oh, cool. Be yeah. local brand identity. Oh, it's like honey. Okay. Cute. Oh. Love that. So he's telling a brand story. Mm -hmm. He's setting a stage. It's the biggest organic beekeeping in Austria. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. He mocked up his... Wow, he has a lot of views and a lot of likes on this, so I think this is a <laughs> yes. testament to his ability, because mm -hmm. this didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. he, you can tell he spent a lot of time. He's even showing process of like how he crafted the, the logo, the mm -hmm. B. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a style guide, too. Yep. Yeah. Different sizes. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of those areas where if a potential client is browsing through this, they can see the level of detail, and, and a lot of clients ask us, like, do you guys do brand style guides? Um, um, uh, and so this is demonstrating that right away. You're, yeah. He's communicating directly to his potential audience. Yeah. Oh, and he's doing mm -hmm. yeah, mock-ups. Mock Looks like uh, probably a graphic burger type of treatment, mm -hmm. contextualizing it. You can use your dimension. Yes, totally use Adobe mm -hmm. Dimension for this. Very cool. Yeah, and he's keeping cool. it um, cohesive. You can tell that he has a lot of similar brand uh, mm -hmm. Threading the brand color throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, he's using like different iterations of a logo. Uh, so you have the yes. bee pulled out, then you have it with the words, then he kind of has it in the circular. Yeah, the laurels. Mm -hmm. Definitely one. Not it's That's not an cool. issue, but just one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of these touch points. Um, I don't know if they are totally relevant to like yeah. the customer mm -hmm. of Be Local. Like, would yeah. they ever have a poster? Or would mm -hmm. this just be like in the home office of yeah. Be Local? Mm -hmm. I think um, it's focusing on, you know, what is their story? Mm -hmm. um, what is the actual um, consumer looking at? Right. Yeah. Um, Any other thoughts? Anything that Alessio could do to make this super amazing? This is cool. 
I think he has a pretty good formula. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. as you continue to do this, you refine it and refine it. But I, I think one thing that uh, Christine is really adept at is finding a flow to the story yeah. from sort of like from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And so it's not sort of jumping around. So when you get into a certain area, in this case, it looks like he, he's started to transition into like what it might be like digitally. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Right, so I think this is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. um, but try not to bounce too much. Mm -hmm. um, and I think contrast in mm -hmm. sort of um, doing micro and macro, mm -hmm. uh, as well as sort of details. Like, I mean, I'm curious like what that the, the paper material might be yeah. like, yeah. little details. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I really liked that thumbnail, but yeah. I felt like I never, Right? That was weird, right? I, like, I want to see more of that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really cool, and that's what caught my attention. Right, I don't see so it So I think else. I kind of want to see it, you know, flavored throughout the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice patterning. Yeah, that kind of threw me a loop for mm -hmm. a loop because... You tricked me. Right. <laughs> you tricked me. Right. <laughs> cool, Alessio, great job. Let's like, look at one job. more. We've got about five minutes left f to do portfolio reviews. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, which, let's see here. Go to the, the Snapchat one. Yeah. Refer, let's see this. What is this all about? <laughs> Alrighty. Is that, that you? Is this you? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's you? Snapchat wanted to tell everyone, hey, I'm still here, stronger than before, so this was my approach for the restyling. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's his Bitmoji. Cool. So he's doing some sort of app design, yeah. perhaps? Yeah. Maybe rebranding Snapchat? Re yeah. His inspiration oh, cool. behind it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ghost, I love that. The concept. And then telling why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New ghost figure, because that is their mascot. Modernize the iconic symbol. <clears throat> Messages are only available for a short time. So, yeah, the little key is kind of secretive, mysterious. Behind every account, there's a real person. So it would be a profile. And I think what this demonstrates uh, for a potential client is uh, it gives a little sort of transparency or insight of your process and thinking. Totally. And so they know that you're not just creating necessarily pretty pictures. It's like there is a rhyme and a reason to what yeah. you're doing. And I think that cerebral side to it is really important. It gives a, a potential client confidence in knowing that uh, you are thoughtful. You can potentially be a critical thinker mm -hmm. in your process. And it's not just like oh, it's an attractive logo, but can it be effective? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm appreciating this kind of story, I think, more than the Be Local one. I'm really understanding mm -hmm. why yeah. these mm -hmm. things are the way that they are. Oh, it's animated. It's, it's, oh, it is. It's, 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 it's <laughs> very subtle. Cool, mm -hmm. got a little color palette. Maybe the color palette's a little big. <laughs> it is pretty big. I, wow. It is, okay. But he's using hexadecimal colors for that. Because mm -hmm. it's all digital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. It is cool, but it kind of reminds me of the color palette where it's like, does this need mm -hmm. to be happening? Because they're all the same. It's just kind of oh, yeah, repeating. It's a, it is a bit distracting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, a cool idea, though. Mm -hmm. You could have this just once and then examples of each typeface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The scale seems um, a little large to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, like, you don't want to have something hanging over the jump. Right. It's, it's, it's yeah. Ooh, icons, I love seeing mm -hmm. these. Showing depth, building a system, mm -hmm. I think is super important in branding, is uh, developing something just beyond a logo, um, be able to tell different stories, mm -hmm. uh, different facets in different ways. So developing these sort of little artifacts and icons are right. really cool. I'd like to see this little icon have the same stroke weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's such like a tiny little nitpick. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not sure what that is. Yeah. Discover all updated stories from your friends. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. But it's cool. I like that they're they're building some sort of system for something. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. Like maybe you... How it's used. It's how many stories they have for you to watch. Um. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see up. I see you. Mm -hmm. These cool um, flat colored phones. Yeah. It's a nice edit. But you can tell there's a lot of thought and yeah. energy in putting this together mm -hmm. beyond just the actual creative side um, and the objective of this project. Right. He, you can tell he spent a lot of time sort of thinking about how do I present this as well. Um, I think that's really 
what I think elevating your game and presentation style is how do you mm -hmm. sort of tell that full story. That's um, cool. yeah. yeah. Everything just, does yeah. have feel really big to mm -hmm. me. Um, what what specifically? Little, I think overall, uh, maybe the scale's a little large. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think everything has to be so big to sort of have an impact. I think sometimes mm -hmm. when it's the smallest thing has the biggest impact. Right. Um, it, it's, I, I guess my eye is looking for a little more contrast. Gotcha. But that, again, that's just a nitpicky thing. Mm -hmm. I really love this eye. It's like yeah. one of my favorite shapes that's like trending right now, but yeah. I don't see it anywhere else mm -hmm. in the whole story. Yeah. So I think, again, that goes back to, you know, flavoring things throughout mm -hmm. and keeping that balance and that flow. Yeah. Whoa, subtle movements. Cool. Oh, you're really good at this. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty so. Pretty fun. Whoa. This almost looks like a catalog of yeah. like all of the things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might not be necessary to show every single one in this manner, but you definitely have a breadth of items. Mm -hmm. Man, oh man. It's so many, it just keeps going. Yeah. The new Snapchat, these could be web ads perhaps. There's a little flavoring of the yeah. eyeball. Mm -hmm. oh, there it is. I spoke too soon. I know. I think also length is um, one factor I would consider. Mm -hmm. um, I think you just want to have enough to, you know, get your point across. Right. Because, um, I mean, this area kind of seems similar to something that you had already presented. Right. Unless you're trying to communicate something else. Um, I don't think it needs to be repeated, but gotcha. that's just like one thing. Right, yeah, these were all shown in full yeah. size and now they're shown think, kind of tiled. Yeah. I think audience retention is kind yeah, of Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Totally. Cool, so overall, really strong. Obviously, yeah. it takes a lot of care into all of the of projects. Thought. Yes, yeah. definitely. Right. And that might also be like one of those things where you're throwing so much at the wall yeah. and then you can step back and yeah. curate and really make everything special. Mm -hmm. Cool, any last thoughts until we return to Earth? Um, I, I, I think the, your, your audience and consumer, I think uh, there's so much talent out there. It's really impressive. And we're always looking for inspiration. And so it's like looking at things like this and, and, and designers like this is what inspires us. It's mm -hmm. like from many different levels, every aspect of where they are in their life and um, where they live. It's mm -hmm. like, I think every, it's, our life is a accumulation of experiences. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're just trying to gather as much of that as possible and learn from each other to sort of make ourselves uh, more multifaceted and, m and more empathetic to other people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think those things help guide us through life and through design. And, and it's through seeing what amazing things people are crafting mm -hmm. and designing and innovating. Um, it, it's really, uh, we love it because it, for, for us, it's what gets us out of bed every day. It's like, we, yeah. don't, we don't look at it as like, oh, we have to go to work today. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, what do we get to, yeah. to design today? We get so, to do this, yeah, we don't forget. Very cool, yeah. so Alyssa and Alessio, that's funny, Alyssa and yeah. Alessio. Uh, great <laughs> job, everyone go ahead and follow Alyssa and Alessio on Behance, and if you didn't know, you can click on each other's icons, um, follow each other in the chat pod. This has been mm -hmm. Aaron and Christine from Farm Design. This mm -hmm. is your last hey. stream. It's the end I of the know. stream. It went by so fast. It was fast. awesome spending time yeah. with you guys. Yes. And Thank the whole you, team everyone. here. There's a there's a whole team. You can't see them. Yeah. They're behind the cameras Woo. here. Woo. Woo. Gus, Woo. And Paco. Cool. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. So cool. So Christine and it's Aaron, really cool. thank you. You've been great, great guests. We've got Chris and Christine, other Christine, Christine Arth, <laughs> coming up next in just a minute. So stick around, go get some water, and get your brain prepared for more awesome creative goodness. Thanks, everyone. See Bye. you soon. Thank Bye, you. everyone.